Well, welcome to this resource on kinetics of a simple redox reaction. And the aim of this experiment is to determine the reaction order and rate constants for the reaction between persulfate and iodide ions. So this is an overview of the presentation. And to start off, we're going to look at monitoring kinetic reactions. So in this reaction, we have the reaction between persulfate and iodide. And these react to form iodine. In general, when we monitor kinetic reactions, we either monitor the rate of disappearance of reactants or the rate of formation of products. And by measuring this rate, we can get an idea of how fast the reaction is proceeding. There are other ways. For example, you probably already completed the iodine clock reaction, where we mix iodine with a known excess of thiosulfate. This turns the iodine into iodide, and for the, the amount of time that the thiosulfate is present, the solution will be clear. Once that's all used up, it'll turn blue. So we can measure that time taken to use up a known amount of thiosulfate. However, in this reaction, we want to go back to the original idea of looking at the formation of products. Iodine is formed in this reaction. And while it's difficult to measure the concentration of iodine as it forms, iodine will react with iodide ions in equilibrium to form the triiodide ion. Therefore, we can use the formation of the triiodide ion as a way of measuring the rate of this reaction. What we'll do is we'll measure the triiodide ion over the initial period of the reaction, while the concentration of iodine is low, and we'll use that as a way of estimating the formation of uh, the rate of formation of products. We can use UV-visible spectroscopy because triiodide absorbs very strong, strongly at 3.53 nanometers whereas iodide, iodine doesn't. We're going to use the method of initial rates. Um, so we can measure the increase in absorbance at 3.53 nanometers, where the triiodide absorbs. And we can do this because in, at the start of the reaction, the concentration of triiodide will be higher than that of iodine. This is the rate law of this reaction. Now, at the start of the reaction, the concentration of triiodide will be much lower than that of the iodide, one of our reagents. So obviously the triiodide will be much smaller. So this second term in this expression is going to be much smaller. And we can simplify our rate law to just including the first term in this expression. This is only valid at um, the first minute or so of the reaction time. OK, so how do we determine the order of reaction and the rate constant in general? Well, these are the reaction mixtures we're going to make up. And you can see here in runs A to D, the concentration of persulfate is held constant, while the concentration of iodide is increased. In terms of the equation shown, what this means is we're holding the S2O8 concentration constant, we're increasing the iodide concentration. If iodide is first order, well then that means that the rate of reaction, di2 dt, will increase by the same amount. Or if we plot a graph of the rate of reaction against iodide concentration, it should be linear. So this will verify that the reaction is first order with respect to iodide. We can do the same by holding the potassium iodide constant, varying the persulfate. Again, in terms of the equation, we're holding the second term constant, increasing the first, and measuring the change in uh, the rate. And again, if this change is linear, we should see a straight line graph confirming that the order with respect to persulfate is 1. Now we've confirmed the orders of reaction. This is the equation of a straight line graph, this rate law. So the plot of rate against the product of the concentrations will give us a straight line whose slope is k1. OK, in terms of the actual data we get from the experiment, we have to remember that this experiment is based on this original equilibrium. And because there is some iodine absorbing a 353, um, we need to take that into account and we need to correct our data. The actual rate of reaction will depend on the concentration of iodide, triiodide at any particular point. So therefore, we take the slopes of the reaction, which are the rates for each individual run, and we multiply these by a correction factor. This correction factor is based on the equilibrium constant, which is 698 for this reaction. We use the original concentration of iodide, uh, and we work out our correction factor. Once we have these corrected slopes, we can plot the corrected slope against the concentration of the variable reagent, either iodide or persulfate, and confirm that indeed these are straight line plots, and therefore the reaction is first order with respect to both of those reagents. Finally, then to calculate K1, we need to change the unit's absorbance per minute into moles per dm cubed. 
per minute. And uh, we do this using the extinction coefficient, which we said was 26,000 dmq per mole per centimeter. We divide our rate from the graph by 26,000 to give us the correct units, and then plot those rates against a product of the concentration, which will give us a slope k1. In the discussion, then, we could think about things like comparing the slope value with that quoted in the paper provided. When you're doing this, you need to think about the ionic strength of your solution and the temperature of your solution. The experiment has several variations. For example, you may have varied ionic strength, doing it in 0.1 molar and 0.5 molar potassium nitrate, or you may have varied temperature. And with these in mind, you could consider the mechanism of reaction.